Right, so today is Saturday, 4th of April. There's another two and a half kilowatts up there now. Installed by Green Pulse Energy in Colchester. Thanks very much, guys, just before the lockdown happened. So that will now enable me to uh, rig some more stuff in, something that I've been wanting to do for a long, long time. So what have we got here then? So these MPPT charge controllers are made by MPP Solar. I'm going to start stocking these. Um, they're 60 amps, maximum 145 to 155 volts. Um, each They are extremely robust when you open these up and I have replaced boards on these before But when you open these up there are two Transformers in them. They've got a massive um, Heat sink at the back. I mean they weigh a ton Really really well built and very well designed. They do come with software um, You get these leads with them the RS 232s and then you need to get in a little adapter, which is an RS-232 to USB. Um, I'll show you the software a bit later once I get cracking with the install. Um, come to the manual um, CD, obviously, to install the software. Um, so I've got two of them. They also come with the temperature sensor wires as well. And I bought some 16mm uh, cable, black and red, to uh, wire these in. I'm actually going to put them here and here. Um, I might swap this one over because that's slightly higher voltage, that's 200 volts and because I've seriesed all the panels at the back now um, I think I might use that in the middle but we'll see it all depends on what fits where um, I haven't quite started yet so, yep, that's the beginning of the install later on in the video I will go through the programming of these mine's a 24 volt system but I'll show you through the software and uh, yeah, then we'll go from there okay, so I just got the uh charge controllers mounted so I'm just going to start to look at the leads now um, a quick word on crimping so I have got this uh, hydraulic crimper which has got lots of different dies with it this is the 16 one um, a lot of these won't, won't fit into the normal wire strippers anyway so you just have to be very very careful because they've got a very thick sheaf on for obvious reasons for insulation um, but you d really don't want to be going through any of these wires here so you need to be really careful of that um, each wire you cut obviously it's gonna it's gonna put more pressure on the other wires um, so yeah what I tend to do is just sort of give them a quick twist around before I put it actually into the the lug itself um, I can't do it because I'm holding the phone here but you get the idea you kind of twist it in to the crimp once it's fully in up to here that's when you then want to stick it into the crimper um, Obviously you put that the collar into the crimper there at that stage and then you obviously crimp the whole thing up. Uh, at that stage I will then usually use the uh, heat shrink and then heat shrink a collar so it will actually go from the collar part all the way up to probably about here. So you've got all of that nicely uh, done. It looks neat and it obviously uh, stops any further contact um, as you can probably see with that one there go fitting straight onto the bus bars okay so I'm going to start doing the crimping now and uh, we'll start to cable it up I've just drawn both of the um, PV cables coming down from the top array so that's going to be the left one that's going to be the right one and before I plug them in I'm going to strip them back and check the voltages on them. Um, the isolator is off so I'm only going to put it on to check the voltage and then it'll be straight off again because obviously I'm not working live. Okay be back soon. Okay so um, I'm just going to load the software from the CD so I've just put the CD in um, and I'm going to just quickly install that I don't know what happened there. Didn't seem to have discovered the. Uh, oh, there it is. It usually comes up automatically. Right, that's, so that'll come up just install. Right, 
So it will come up with that screen and if everything's good we should get all the ticks and then you press done. I'm going to allow access and then we'll come into the screen which is the main screen. Sorry about the ripples there, it's picking things up. Um, well, I'm just going to quickly get this working first so I can show you. This is already plugged into an existing charge controller which has got all the parameters already set for the lithium. Okay, welcome back. So, not everything always goes smoothly. Especially with solar stuff. It's all fairly new. Um, right, problem number one was I couldn't get the laptop software working no matter what I did, so I have programmed them by hand before. So that's what I did. I went and programmed all the parameter settings of the both units by hand. Um, everything was cabled in just for a test, so I haven't neatened up the cables yet. And problem number two. So these charge controllers have a limited voltage of 145, whereas that unit goes up to 200 volts. Um, as you'll see, Peggy from MPP Solar said, oh, they will probably get up to 155. So we're literally just tipping over 156 there. Um, and that's because all the panels are in series. Now, this is gonna be a right pain, really. Um, it'll probably only take about an hour to do, but we're gonna go, have to go up on the roof um, and basically take one of the panels in and put it in parallel. Um, so we'll have uh, two in series and two in parallel, potentially. Um, which we'll need some wire connectors for, which I happen to have. Uh, in my solar MC4 box so they are well they look like they look like this so you can connect two into one and um, therefore you can parallel them um, that's quite an interesting thing that's a, a fuse so you've got a solar fuse in there as well in case the uh, panels put out more than they should or the short out um, anyway, that's how they come. And they've got you basically unscrew them, they've got a fuse in the middle. So, yeah, there we go. So, I cannot do any more today because I can't get up on the roof really at the moment and um, do that. So, uh, that's going to be another day's job. Obviously, as soon as the panel uh, voltage, they're in full sun at the moment, we're um, complete blue skies. <laughs> Once that. Uh, dulls down a bit then it'll kick into action uh, when it's slightly duller but that's what we're gonna have to do to get around that problem anyway um, we wanted to keep the voltage as high as possible because they're coming from the top panels of the roof but that's uh, that's gonna be the issue so we're uh, I thought they might have a little bit more headroom than they have but they're obviously set there to 155 um, to cut off so we're just over that right anyway we'll give you another update uh, once uh, all the panels are done properly and then uh, we can we can see the next load in action yeah we had to restring them we put them all in series and the voltage ended up being about 148 I think 146 volts which I thought that the charge controllers that we're using would be fine because they're rated for 145 and once I went back to MPP solar they said yeah it should be good for 155 well I can tell you they're not. Um, fantastic units, by the way. PCM60X, brilliant heat sinks in, two transformers in them. You can get the boards and replace them if you need to. Uh, had a complete rewire on here. Um, so basically what you've got is the two Tesla modules uh, coming in, the two negatives to the Victron shunt. Then we're coming out here into the main bus bar. All the charge controllers all the way along plus the winter one which uses the grid in wintry days and I use cheap electricity overnight that also comes into here as well so basically all the charging infrastructure comes there and then the actual um, inverter negative comes into that bar as well so the shunt basically is measuring everything that's going into the battery and everything that's going out of the battery 
and then that will uh, monitor it in the Victron software. So all the, I rewired all of the back uh, panels that are on the back of the house um, into series to get the voltage up on this side because this one um, is a 60 amp controller but it is actually 200 volts it's rated at which is fantastic if you're going into series. Most panels now are somewhere between 305, 355 watts each. Uh, most of the standard panels that you're now buying which makes these a little bit more awkward if you're off grid to um, to install unless you already know what I now know which is that you'll have to series two of them and parallel two of them so that's that little bit of a rewire there we've got the a dual pole isolator so that's all the four cables coming in splitting down into the two and then going back into the two charge controllers underneath I always um, put my positives so I can know which ones they are um, and that's why I always do the red and black. Um, just makes things easier when you look at them visually, especially when you don't have to touch the system for such a long time and then you might have to come back to it. Using the 16mm cable there and this big large cable is a uh, um, welding cable. So the bus bar is rated at 400 amps and the 70mm uh, squared cable is also 400 amps um, and that's obviously the inverters going straight in that negative from the inverters going straight into that bus bar so yeah everything on that bus bar is everything being charged and taken out by the inverter and that's being measured by this shunt here the other side the positive side is well out of the way over there um, and everything else is connected to that side it's only the, uh, the negative side which is uh, measuring stuff. Tesla modules are still performing brilliantly well. They've been in system for a year now um, and that's what we're looking at. So yeah we've got one that's slightly over at the moment, 0.1 of a volt. That usually starts to drag back in again. I think maybe that's because I've just switched the system off. But um, we've got obviously now massive loads of sunshine and both my rays are on so um, it's running the whole house and I've still got a positive uh, stream coming in which is where the feeding tariff would come in quite nicely so the last thing to say about this is I've ordered um, some more breakers now up till now I've been using these little breakers which are fine but there is such a difference in quality Obviously they're produced by the thousands in China and they're just the quality control is just not there. Um, if you get a good one, like this one here, it works well and does the job that it needs to do. Now what happened was I bought two of these slightly more uh, larger ones, 80 amp rather than 60, just to see if it just trips out sometimes it was tripping out because sometimes the even though these are say 60 amps they sometimes put out 61 or, or even seen it on occasion 62 amps now you can um, program them obviously manually uh, and get them back a bit so you can only put out 55 so that's something that I should really uh, do and just back it off to say something like 58 um, but the main purpose of this is I, I've ordered and I'll show you when I've installed them I've ordered a little two um, a consumer unit with two little MCB boards in and I've ordered the type of breakers which are similar to these but they're actually like proper breakers 63 amp ones which are used on electric bikes and things I'm gonna fit them in a little unit and put them down there because I've seen that go a couple of times already from when this particular charge controller that's feeding through it I bought two 80 ones and I happen to have this spare one so I've had to put that in just to get the system up and running but I am gonna replace both of those um, with this new system I, I would say if you're starting out your system now definitely went, look at the next video and definitely go that way uh, and get proper decent breakers which are DC rated um, as well I haven't wired the temperature gauges in yet because it means literally dismantling all of that front and taking it all off um, which I am going to do but I um, just haven't had a chance to do yet and in the summer it's not a massive deal um, this garage doesn't get that hot so uh, that's why they're all wired up like that at the moment um, that's it really 
I tried to make it as neat as I can, but it's just, it seems all the different cable lengths you need, it all depends on where you are. And I guess that comes back to again, that this system has just been thrown together from bits from the first time I started it really. Um, and now here we are at pretty much five kilowatts of power going in. Yes, I'd have done some things different, but it all works. It, it, it's very, very uh, robust uh, so far. And as I said, the other systems with the lithium batteries have been running there, running a year now without any issues. So I certainly, was, if I was designing the system now, would say, right, this is how much I'm going to spend. This is what I'll design. And then obviously future-proof it as well because you would have a lot, probably a lot neater, or not probably, definitely a lot neater system um, than what I've got here. So, yeah, I've done a fair bit in terms of getting all that cabled in and working. I guess the only other thing to mention would be I couldn't get my laptop working in the end. I'm gonna borrow another smaller laptop from someone uh, so I can actually show you me programming for the laptop, but um, for now, um, I've just been programming um, manually so that's basically just holding that button in and then you go through a cycle of menus and you can program them manually so I've just copied the settings from that one onto these two manually for the time being when I get the laptop uh, back I'll show you the actual software that connects via a little Ethernet port um, whereabouts is that oh yeah under there they've both got ports in I believe you can parallel these as well so that will be the next um, video well i'll show you that anyway in the meantime happy solaring and enjoy all your projects and everyone stay safe uh, obviously it has given us a bit more time to um work on this kind of stuff while we're all in lockdown but um yeah stay safe and see you soon mm -hmm.